Good morning, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I thought I would talk about the words desire, attachment, and love. And these days, I think probably a lot of us are hearing the word love. And it's so interesting that uh, people have attached this word, attached, <laughs> to so many different uh, ideas that it might have lost the depth of the true meaning of love too. So today I'd like to talk to you about at least these three words and uh, see if you can reflect on what I'm sharing with you. I wanted to start with this quotation by Mikhail Nemi, and it says, love is the only freedom from attachment. When you love everything, you are attached to nothing. So love is the only freedom from attachment. When you love everything, you are attached to nothing. Now, you know, a lot of people would think about this idea and say, oh my goodness, oh yeah, well, I'm attached to my partner, my my spouse, my dog, my any, my house, any of these things. And if you love everything, you'd be attached to nothing. And yeah, it sounds easy, <laughs> or maybe not, because most of us are very specific about what we get attached to. And unless we're actually paying attention to this process, we don't actually question our experience. So today I thought if we start with the idea of desire and we think about the fact that the movement of the senses is desire. So just this movement of the senses. So imagine if I see something beautiful, it could be a beautiful person or it could be a beautiful environment. It could be a beautiful home. It could be a beautiful workplace. It could be a beautiful anything, right? And if I see it, I suddenly have a desire to see it again. I think, wow, I really like that. So in that sort of idea, now it could be something I'm tasting, it could be something I'm hearing, could be something I'm seeing visually. And most often for many people, the sight is quite a, a drawing space for desire. And then of course there is touch too, which is also a drawing space, which then brings up another idea. So do we Think of these things, this sight or this movement of senses of any sort. Do we think of that as love? Because people will say, I love that music. I love that musician. I love this place. I love this place, in, even in terms of my favorite restaurant, right? All of these things, people will say, I love this. So what is that? It's a movement of the senses. So again, when I'm thinking about, oh, I love how their food tastes. Now, if I have a memory about how a food tastes or an experience, that's moving into a different sort of space, which is more of a pleasure, right? So now pleasure comes from this memory of something that's been experienced already. There's been movement of senses. There's a pleasure in that memory. And now I'd like to have that again. And this is, again, this movement. Now, what happens with attachment? Now, let's say I moved and I've actually got, uh, maybe I own that restaurant, <laughs> maybe I bought the home that I love, maybe I've got the career that I love, perhaps I've married the person that I love, and now brings in a bit of attachment. So now when there's attachment, this is when we start saying things like mine, right? <laughs> this is mine. This is where ego really shows. So this is my house, this is my car, this is my husband, this is my wife, this is my relationship, this is my child, this is my pet. Any of these things where, where that movement goes into this is mine, we start really narrowing down what is mine and what is yours. And this difference doesn't allow for this freedom space because now I start feeling things with attachment. With attachment, now suddenly there might be a fear or an anxiety of loss of what, I, what I'm considering mine. This is mine. And now this house might have been someone else's, but now it's mine and I don't want anything to happen to this house. Same thing with the relationship. The relationship is mine because I might see that this relationship is spending a lot of time with me. What happens later in a relationship when there's a little bit less time that might be spent together? Do I feel like I'm losing my relationship now? I might start having jealousy about where my partner is spending their time and why is it not with me? And that sort of idea, so it could be at work, it could be with another relationship. I don't know, but it's not with me. So this is that attachment space, which again brings about things like jealousy, anxiety, fear. 
And this, would we say that it's love? But a lot of people will say, well, if I'm attached to someone, it's because I love them. If I, I'm attached to this space because I just love that. I'm attached to this job because I love it. So you see how that word is being used in a way that does not really reflect true love. When we think about love, we can watch this whole thought pattern that we now have an understanding of, hopefully you've got some understanding from this video, about how the mind thinks through these processes and how when we're just first enjoying senses and just being in that space where desire is kind of being born, it's only when we're continuously thinking about this desire and thinking about this pleasure and the pleasant experience and wanting more of it and then getting attached to it. When we see this whole process, we see that none of those areas is love. Love just is. It's not dependent on I have to have that or this is mine. Nothing like that. Love just is. And so today I'd love for you to sit and see that are you somewhere in that spectrum of those thought patterns? And now do you understand what the mind is doing, what the thought pattern can lead us into and how it can bring up a lot of energies that are not so comfortable like anxiety, frustration, possessiveness, demands of another and demands of ourselves too. I have to keep this. I have to work this hard, even though I can't afford the mortgage. And you know, a lot of people are in this space today where COVID time, I'd say, has really affected a lot of finances and a lot of jobs and careers. And yet people will take on three jobs to be able to pay for exactly what they afforded before because they love the space that they're in. And then there's the fear of what if I lose this space, where would I go to? And it's true because things are not so inexpensive to move into. So even if someone moves out of one place, it's not so easy to move into the next space. But remembering that this whole space of love has shifted and the space of serenity and calm also brings a lot of solutions and this love that flows to us from that easier space that directs our actions too. That is something I'll probably talk about in my next video, but for now, I hope you've got some idea about desires, about, um, uh, again, these attachments, about uh, the consequences of attachments, and about love and how it's very different from all of those other parts, yet we can see this continuous flow of the thought processes in the human mind and experience. And then I thought I'd finish with this Buddha quote. And this quotation says, in the end, only three things matter. You might've heard this quote before. It's a famous one. It says, how much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you. And you know, these are big things to, um, to think about, like when we're thinking of letting go of something which is not meant for us, remember that is an act that can be from love too, love and compassion for ourselves that can allow those, those spaces of true loving energies to work. So I would love for you to reflect on that today. I hope you have a fantastic day ahead and I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.